of x are polynomials. Okay, so like x squared, x plus 2, 5, 3x minus 7. Non-permissible values, we spent a whole unit on them last year. We talked about them very briefly when we did the tan graphs. So NPVs, we call them. What happens when we graph an NPV? How do you graph something that doesn't exist? Asymptote. Okay, so non-permissible values become asymptotes. Thank you, Mrs. Dabrowski. We are going to look at one vertical asymptote graphs, two vertical asymptote graphs. Wahaha. And then just flipping the page, we'll get to no vertical asymptotes and then one we haven't seen yet. Again, most of this we looked at last year. I'm just going to sneak a few little things in there. So a one vertical asymptote graph has, get this, one vertical asymptote. It can be on the y-axis, it can not, it can be on the left, it can be on the right. And since you can't really see that, I'm going to draw it right beside. And last year we talked a little bit about horizontal asymptotes, but I kept saying we're not supposed to talk about them, and then they're supposed to magically appear this year, but we kind of talked about them. So we will talk more, but there actually is also a horizontal asymptote. And again, it doesn't have to be on the x-axis, could be higher, could be lower. And so one vertical asymptote graph ends up looking like this. Okay, so it approaches the x-axis but never crosses, approaches the y-axis but never crosses. And that's because you can't cross an asymptote until tomorrow. And then there's a second piece on this side. And it approaches both the asymptotes. Now keep in mind, mathematicians were not terribly creative people, so we have named all of these graphs, and we're pretty um, standard. We look at this and we name it by what we see. So who remembers from last year what we call this graph? This is the volcano graph. Yep, because it looks like a volcano and something we think the asymptote looks like lava pouring out. Uh, I don't know, we're just not creative people. So we categorize rational graphs by the number of vertical asymptotes. So this is called volcano. It has one vertical asymptote. Now we can have variations of volcano. So I'm going to start with the exact same asymptotes. Horizontal and a vertical. And again, they don't have to be on the axes. They could be moved over. And I'm going to start with the same piece on the left-hand side. So it approaches both the asymptotes but doesn't cross it. But the variation is instead of the second piece also being on the top, the second piece ends up being on the bottom. Looks nothing like a volcano, we know that. We call it variation of volcano because it still has one vertical asymptote. And the pieces don't have to be in quadrant two and four. They could end up in one and three. Just like the two pieces in the volcano don't have to both be going up. They might be both be going down. These you saw last year. This one is going to be new. Still has one vertical asymptote. But it's not going to have a horizontal asymptote. It's going to have something you've never heard of before, which is called an oblique asymptote. An oblique just means slanted. Okay, so just vocabulary is called an oblique asymptote. 
and that's just a fancy word for slanted. So instead of horizontal, it's on some kind of an angle. Check out what this volcano looks like. Okay, so nothing like a volcano, but it's the same category because it has one vertical asymptote. And it's really just kind of the variation of the second one that we've taken that horizontal and we've just pushed it over so it's slanted. And the pieces don't have to be on the left and right. They could also be on the top and bottom, just depends on the equation. But we categorize all these as volcanoes because they all have one vertical asymptote. So these two you saw last year, this one is new. You didn't see with an oblique asymptote last year. Is it kind of coming back a little bit? Then the second category we have is with two vertical asymptotes, typically one on the left and one on the right. Has a horizontal asymptote. Again, doesn't have to be on the x-axis. Could be lower, could be higher. Don't spoil the fun. And this one, you end up getting volcano on the left, volcano on the right, parabola in the middle. And they're always opposite, so if the volcano is on the top, the parabola is on the bottom. If the volcano was on the bottom, the parabola would be on the top. Zach, what do we call it? I call it sad clown face. Just saying. And for those who aren't visual and like, what? We see these as the eyes, and this is the sad mouth, and the asymptote of the tears, so it's like it's crying. He's so sad. Yeah, I didn't make that up. This is not me. This is what mathematicians actually call this. Sad clown face. And everyone knows exactly what they're talking about. We are not creative people at all. What you didn't see last year was the variation on sad clown face. Asymptote on the left. Asymptote on the right. Horizontal asymptote. I totally just remembered I have jokes for you. Oh, not good ones. No, no. Can't touch this. Come on. So bad that they're funny. Okay, variation of San Clown Face. Are you ready? Because you're not going to like this. Volcano on the left on the bottom. Volcano on the right on the top. Cubic in the middle. So instead of a parabola, you end up with a cubic. Yeah, you can cross horizontal asymptotes. We'll talk later. No, that doesn't look like a clown at all. Again, we group them together because they both have two vertical asymptotes. So just to repeat, these two you saw last year, this one is brand new. This you saw last year, this one is brand new. Can I flip? Okay, new vertical asymptote you saw last year. Horizontal asymptotes.
This one comes from the left, makes a tiny little swoop, and then approaches the asymptote again on the right. It is speed bump. You saw this one last year. Which I'm thinking had a Manitoban named that, that would have been mountain. Because to us, that's pretty big, but speed bump. Last one is brand new. And I want you to put an open circle somewhere on the graph, doesn't matter where. I put it in the first quadrant. And then I'm going to draw a linear function on either side of it and put arrows. What the heck is that? Well, it's a variation of no vertical asymptote because there is no vertical asymptote. There's just a hole in the middle of the graph. Just a hole, an empty spot. You will. So, remember, not creative people. So, volcano, sad clown face, speed bump. This is the one you didn't meet last year. Graph with hole. Is that not kind of a letdown? Like, you think it would be golf course? No. No. Graph with hole. Yeah, it's a graph with a hole. Yeah, graph with hole. All of the graphs we're going to end up drawing tomorrow will all look like one of these. So it will either be volcano and its variations, slad, slad clown face and its variations, speed bump, or graph with hole. All we're going to do today is just practice finding the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal and oblique asymptotes, and we're just going to practice that. Then we'll do the graphing tomorrow. If we do everything today, your brain's going to be on overload. You're going to need paper. No, this is where you get your own paper. I'm not your paper supplier. No, you have to get your own paper. We did vertical asymptotes last year. This isn't new. The piece we're adding in new is the whole. So here is the method box. You're going to factor everything. Mariana. Factor anything you can. If the binomial on the bottom cancels, that should be denominator. Denominator. Cancels, it's a whole. If it doesn't cancel, it's a vertical asymptote. We're going to factor anything we can. If we can cancel it, it ends up being a whole. If we can't cancel it, it's a vertical asymptote. Okay, so in the first examples, that's all we're going to practice is just finding vertical asymptotes and holes. Step number one, factor anything. Can I factor the numerator, x plus 3? Nope, so I'm just going to leave it. Oop, 3. Can I factor the bottom? Okay. Offer of x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay. What can we cancel? So the conclusion is our x plus 3 is a whole. Our x minus 3 is a vertical asymptote. If it cancels, it's a whole. If it doesn't cancel, it's a vertical asymptote. Well, where is the whole? Well, we take that, denom or that binomial and we set it equal to 0, just like we did last year. So we're going to say x plus 3 cannot be 0, which means x cannot be minus 3. So we have a whole at x equal to minus 3. Right, we always set the denominator equal to 0. Wait from last year. Where did the what? No, this is a three. Take the second one, set it equal to zero. 
the vertical asymptote is that x cannot be 3. That's it. Exactly what we did last year. We just didn't have any situations where they canceled. So if it cancels, it's a whole. If it doesn't cancel, vertical asymptote. Okay, let's look at number two, or I guess letter B. Can we factor anything? Offer of two and x plus one. Can we factor the bottom? So what's the conclusion about x minus four? It's a vertical asymptote. Why? Because it didn't cancel. And now we just state where it is. X cannot be 4. Okay. That would have been a question from last year. C, x squared plus x minus 2 over x plus 1. Go ahead and factor anything you can. Offer for the top. Uh, x plus two, x minus one. Confirm. Can we factor the bottom? Does it cancel? There's either yes or no. There's no kind of. It either cancels or does not cancel. Can we say, well, it's close to this? No. If it doesn't cancel, it doesn't cancel. Conclusion? Vertical asymptote, x cannot be minus 1. Do I care what's on the top? Nope, irregardless for calculating vertical asymptotes. The only thing we need the top for is to cancel if it's a whole. I could care less what's on the top when I'm actually figuring out the vertical asymptotes. x squared minus x minus 12, 4 minus x. Offer for the top, offer of x minus 4 and x plus 3, confirm. C can we factor the bottom? Okay. We can. What can we factor out of the bottom? Oh, okay, I'm going to take out a minus 1 and I'll tell you why in a second. So 4 divided by negative 1. And negative x divided by negative 1. And who can see why I did that? Because now we can cancel. So I'm just going to reorder these into be the x minus 4, which tells you we're going to cancel. We use that in identities. We canceled and made it negative 1. Same thing here. That's what we did by factoring out. We canceled and made it negative 1. It would just stay in front. Oh. So conclusion. Two choices. It's a hole. How do we know? Because it canceled. How do we find where the hole is? But what do we do with this negative out here? So just like before, I'm going to take the whole denominator and make it equal to zero. The zero, the negative included. How do I get rid of this negative? Divide or multiply by both sides. So x cannot be 
So in essence, the negative didn't matter. I just wanted you to understand mathematically why it didn't matter. That's what we need to do step one tomorrow when we actually do the graphing. The first step is to either find the vertical asymptotes or the holes. How are we feeling on this? Okay. Let's go to horizontal and oblique, which is new, because last year we didn't really talk about horizontal. We did, but I was like, bah, it'll all make sense next year. Don't worry about it. Step number one, we have to do what's called analyze the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Analyze the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Way back in grade nine, we taught you what was the degree of a polynomial. Anyone remember? It could be one. It's not always going to be one. It's the highest exponent. High five, Robley. So just some examples. If I give you a linear function, I don't know, y equals 3x plus 4, we say that has a degree of? One, because what's the exponent on the x that we don't see? One. That's called a first-degree polynomial. It was the very first one that you learned. Then in grade 11, we were like, ooh, now you're ready for x squared plus x minus 2, for example. What's the degree of that? Two. That's called a second-degree polynomial. And then unit 5, we're going to be like, ooh, cubics. What's the degree of a cubic? Three, that's a third degree polynomial. And then we're going to add cortex and quintics, but I can't talk about that now. Can't talk about it. You're going to have three possibilities. There are more, but in this unit, we're only going to look at three. The degree of P of X is one more than the degree of Q of X. What the heck does that mean? Well, just a reminder, P of X is the top, Q of X is the bottom. So it's telling you the top is one degree higher than the bottom. So the top might be a quadratic and the bottom might be a line. It might be a line over a number. The second po possibility is the degree of P of X is equal to the degree of Q of X, meaning the two are exactly the same degree. And the third possibility is the degree of P of X is one less than the degree of Q of X. So the top is one less than the bottom. Those are going to be the only three possibilities we're going to run into. Are you still kind of with me? Okay. Here's what those three possibilities mean. And I flipped them so we have to change this. We have to switch the first one and the third one. Here's the advantage to being a day behind the other class. This one is going to be degree over degree plus one. And the bottom is degree plus one over degree. So our three possibilities. Oh, it went all smudgy. Left brains understand why I'm upset with that. Degree over degree plus one. Second situation is degree over degree. Third is, I have to box it, I can't smudge it. Degree plus one over degree. Those are the only three possibilities you're gonna encounter. If it is the first situation, you have degree over degree plus one, that's a horizontal asymptote. More specifically, it's always at x equal to 0 or the x-axis. If you have degree over degree, that's also going to be a horizontal asymptote. And it's going to be y equals the leading coefficient of p of x divided by the leading coefficient of x, q of x. What the heck? What is a leading coefficient? Kind of. Anyone else want to guess? It doesn't always have to be the first. Do you have 2x squared over 2? Yes, why? Because the coefficient of the, degree of the x over 3 is the highest. What makes a degree? How do we know what a degree is? Highest it's exponent. It's the coefficient of the term. with the largest exponent.
And for non-wordy people, this is going to make sense once we do some examples. If you have degree plus one over degree, and we need to change this, it's not a horizontal asymptote, this is your oblique asymptote. And we're going to use something called synthetic division, which we'll talk about once we get down to example two, but you're not going to like it. Those are the only three situations you're going to run into. The first thing we do is look at the degrees. If it's degree over degree plus one, that's a horizontal asymptote, and it's right on the x-axis. If it's degree over degree, it's also a horizontal asymptote, but it's somewhere else than the x-axis. If it's degree plus one over degree, that's the oblique or slanted asymptote, and there's a process we need to find it. Those are the only choices that you're going to run into. Okay, so number two, we're just going to practice finding vertical, or sorry, horizontal and oblique. We look at the degrees for this one. We're not starting to factor. Factor is for vertical asymptotes. We're looking at the degrees. What's the degree on the top? One. That's called a first degree polynomial. What's the degree on the bottom? Two. So we call that degree over degree plus one because the bottom is one higher than the top or p of x is one less than the degree of q of x. So is that situation one, situation two, or situation three? That is situation number one. So automatically you know that's a horizontal asymptote. And it's at y equals zero. And we usually put the cannot equal because we're talking about a, an asymptote. So this is the easiest situation because there's no work. If it's degree over de degree plus one, it's always a horizontal asymptote. It's always right at the x-axis. Degree on the top, degree on the bottom. Okay, what do we call that situation? Degree plus one over degree, which means the top is one more than the bottom, or the degree of p of x is one more than the degree of q of x. Which situation is that one, two, or three? That is three, so it tells us we have an oblique asymptote. Put your pens down. No touching. You're just going to watch me because this is something brand new. In the beginning, it seems really confusing. You're going to see it's not. Uh, I'll do it while you're watching, then I'll redo it with you, and then we'll do a couple more examples after. We're going to use what's called synthetic division, which is basically like long division you learned in grade six, except it's with polynomials. So let's just review long division way back from grade six. Let's divide five into, I don't know, give me a really big number. Okay, so remember this. Okay, so you go, how many times does 5 go into 3? None. So how many times does it go into 36? Seven. Offer of 7. And then we do 7 times 5 is 35. And then we subtract 1. And then we bring the 4 down. And we say, how many times does 5 go into 14? Twice. And 2 times 5 is? And we subtract? And then if we wanted to keep going, we would put the zero, but we can also just say remainder four. Does that kind of remember way back when long division? I want to make sure everybody learned it that way. So what does the word synthetic mean? Uh, Man-made man -made could be. What's another synonym for synthetic? Yeah, artificial it means fake. So I'm going to do what's called fake division because I'm going to do it completely backwards to that. I'm going to put the division side upside down. Now, this always makes me laugh because to the rest of the world, that's not upside down. It's only to North America that that's upside down. We do it that way. Most other countries do it this way. And I'm going to take the top, and I'm only going to take the coefficients because I don't like x's. They scare me. So the first coefficient is negative 1. I don't have any x's, so that's I'm going to put 0. And the constant I have is 5. So all I did was just put the numbers. I put my x squared first, which was negative 1. I don't have any x's, and I have my constant, which is 5. Still with me? 
I want to take the bottom and I want to equate it to zero because I need x equal to something. So what does x equal? Two. I'm going to put two on the outside. Still with me? Again, I know this is weird when you've never seen it before. I'm going to drop this number straight down just like we dropped a number down in the other one. And I'm going to multiply just like we multiplied. So two times negative one is negative two. And then I'm going to add the column, just like we subtracted before. So 0 plus negative 2, negative 2. And then I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 2, and I'm going to put the answer in the next column. So 2 times negative 2, negative 4. And I'm going to add and drop it down, just like we did before, 1. I'm just going to pause there. I dropped, I multiply, I added. I multiply, I added. If there was more numbers, I would just keep going. It's just I'm out of numbers. Are you kind of still with me? Again, I know it's weird when you've never seen it. This number is meaningless. I don't care what number ends up there until next unit. At this unit, I could care less if it's a 1, a 27,000, a pi. I don't care at all. All I care is about the first two numbers. Remember, a bleak asymptote is a slanted asymptote, so it's just a line. And what this gives us is the m, and this gives us the b. So it tells me my oblique asymptote is at y equals negative x minus 2. Are we okay? Okay, I'm going to do it with you. Upside down division sign. The numbers inside are going to be the numerator, and I'm going to fill in this row right here. The first column is going to be my, whatever my x squareds are. The second is going to be the x's, and the third is going to be c. And if you're not going to remember c equals constant, then write down the word constant. What's a constant? Just a number. So it's just the number at the end. And all I care about is the actual coefficients. I don't care about the x's themselves. So in the numerator, how many x squareds do we have? Minus 1. And in the numerator, how many x's do we have? And in the numerator, what's the constant that we have? The number on the outside comes from the denominator. And it just comes from setting the denominator equal to 0. So what does x equal on the bottom? So this example, we had x equal, or minus 2 equals 0, and so x is going to equal root of negative three. Ooh, no negative 3 in this at all. 2. It's just a 2. Are you still with me? First number is always going to drop straight down. Now it's multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add till you run out of numbers. So I'm going to multiply by the number of the outside, and I'm going to put it into the next column. So 2 times negative 1, negative 2. And now I'm just adding that column. 0 minus 2, minus 2. Now I'm going to repeat. 2 times negative 2, and I'm going to put it into the next column. Negative 4. And I'm going to add that column and get a final answer of... One. If I had more numbers, I would keep going. I'm just out of numbers. You can, yes. It's just next unit we need to keep going. So if we just practice, then it'll be fine next unit. So if I had more, if, if I started with something with x to the 4, I'm going to have an x to the 4, an x to the 3, an x to the 2, an x to 0, blah, blah, blah. Nothing this unit. Next unit, they'll tell you more. This number I don't care about until next unit. First number is the m, second number is the b. So our oblique asymptote comes from these two numbers, and it's going to be y equals negative x minus 2. Whew. I know, first time you see it, it's crazy. Letter C, negative x squared plus 5 over 3x squared. 
Remember, our goal this time is not to find vertical. We've been there, done that. We're finding horizontal or oblique. So the first thing we do is analyze the degree. What's the degree on the top? What's the degree on the bottom? Two. So we call that degree over degree, or the degree of P of X is equal to the degree of Q of X. Is that situation one, situation two, or situation three? That is two. So we know that we have a horizontal asymptote, and we know it's not on the x-axis, it's somewhere else. What it does is it comes from the coefficients of your two degrees. Okay, so the coefficient of the top is negative one. Coefficient of the bottom is three. So our horizontal asymptote is x cannot be negative a third. We're always happy, quite frankly, when it's not oblique, because it's way less work. What's the coefficient of x squared? And what's the coefficient of x squared on the bottom? It comes right from the coefficients. How are we doing so far? If we're like here, I'm okay. If we're here, I'm not okay. Okay. D. Y equals x squared plus 6x minus 7 over x plus 2. Degree on the top, two. Degree on the bottom, one. What do we call that? Degree plus one over degree. Situation one, two, or three. And then we're like, shoot, we gotta do crazy division. Okay, so let's do this one together. Up sign, down, division sign. The top row comes from the coefficients of the numerator in order. So how many x squareds do we have? How many x's do we have? And what's the constant? Number on the outside comes from setting the denominator equal to zero. So if I have x plus two, x equals negative two. First number always drops straight down. Then we're always multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding until we run out of numbers. Negative two times one. Negative two. Add that column. Negative two times four. Add that column. What numbers do I care about in this? Only the one in the four. Don't care at all what the last number is till next unit. That means the oblique asymptote is y equals x plus 4. Not too bad, eh? Not too bad. Situation 3 is my least favorite too, except when we get to the graphing, it's one of the easiest graphs to do. Whew, how are we doing? x squared minus 4 over x plus 3. Degree on the top. Degree on the bottom. Situation 1, 2, or 3. 3. Oh, stupid situation number 3. Excuse me while I go yell at people in the hallway. She totally gave me the stink eye. She's like, oh, really? I just asked you to step down the hallway. Okay, situation number three. Why are we practicing so many threes? Because it's the hardest one to do. Okay, you tell me what to write down. In Brazil, do they do it this way, or do you do the sign the other way? this way, yeah. It's the, it's the rest of the world does it like this. We, North America, we do it upside down. I don't know, let's do North America. <laughs> Which, we came from Europe, so why do we do it differently? I don't know. But... No, that's the states. We just copy them because they're neighbors. Okay. 
Yes. Just pausing. Anyone not sure where those numbers came from? Again, I know it's crazy at first, but once you do it a few times, it's pretty easy. Where do we get the oblique asymptote out of this? What does oblique mean? Slanted. Just means an asymptote that's slanted. Hmm. Yeah, to me, those words don't even sound the same. Okay, example three, we're putting all this together now. So we're going to find the NPVs and decide if they're an asymptote in a hole. That was example one. We're going to do horizontal and oblique. That was example two. And now I'm going to add an intercept. Whoa, what is an intercept? Well, you've been doing these since grade 10. You did them with parabolas. We've done them with lines. We've done them with cubics. What's an intercept? What does it mean? Something about zero. That's intersects. This is intercepts. Where they cross the x and y axis. And what do you know about the y value at an x intercept? It's zero. And what do you know about the x value at a y intercept? Okay, so I'm not adding in new math. I'm just adding in with the rational functions. So we're going to do all this thing put together. Why? Because this is what we need to do in order to graph tomorrow. All of these things all at the same time. I'm a lefty, can't help it, so I like to split my page into three. If you're a righty, you probably won't care. Righties are way more free-spirited than lefties. I'm going to do vertical asymptote slash holes in the first column. I'm going to do my horizontal slash oblique in the second. And my intercepts over here. And then I'm a visual lefty, so it has to look pretty. For the first one, I'm going to write some keywords just to remind us about the steps. I wouldn't usually put these down when we're just doing an example, but for the first one, I want to have some steps. Step one for a vertical asymptote is factoring. So you factor anything that you can. Can we factor the top? Okay, what can we take out of it? You are like the factoring machine this year, Cash, I tell you. Excuse me, I'll go yell in the hallway again. Now we decide, did it cancel? If the answer is yes, the conclusion would be whole. If it, the answer is no, conclusion is vertical asymptote. Did this happen to cancel? So we have a vertical asymptote. And how do we find where it is? How, do, how where did that come from? Where did this four magically appear? Right, denominator equal to zero. So if you need to write that out, then write it out. It was x minus four equals zero, x therefore equals four. Moving to my second column, the horizontal or oblique. Step one is to analyze the degrees. Degree on the top, one. Degree on the bottom. Which situation is that? We have a choice of d plus 1 over d, d over d, or d over d plus 1. So 
So that is situation number two. It's like, whew, it's not oblique. That's really all we care about. Not oblique is good. Um, what do I want to put for this? Um, I'm just going to put situation with a question mark. Not like from Jersey Shore. But which one of those situations is it? So how do we remember degree over degree? So we think, okay, degree over degree, it's a horizontal asymptote. We have two choices. It's either the coefficients or it's zero. Which one is degree over degree? The coefficients, okay? So leading coefficient on the top. Leading coefficient on the bottom. Can we reduce or simplify that? 2 over 1. Y does not equal 2. Okay, so that just came right from the situation number 2. Are we doing okay so far? Do you see why I just didn't jump right into graphing? Like there's a lot of steps before we even get to the graph. We have to figure out all these things. Uh, X intercept. means y equals 0. So 0 on the left, everything on the right. This is where there's usually some blank stairs. What do we do now? Well, how do we get rid of a division by x minus 4? We multiply. So what's going to happen is we're really multiplying it up to the other side. And what happens when you multiply something by zero? It goes. So really, the bottom is irrelevant in terms of the x-intercept. Okay. So all I did was multiply by x minus 4, and then it became zero on the other side. Solve for x. Offer of negative 1. That sounds confirmed. Now, what I like to do, and it's totally up to you, is I like to write this as a coordinate point because later you might think that looks like an asymptote the way it's written. So I always like to write it as a point just to remind myself that's an actual point on the graph. It's not an asymptote. It's not a hole. It's nothing but a point. Not that points aren't important. They are. Step number two is our y-intercept, which means x equals zero. And so y equals 2 times 0 plus 2, and 0 minus 4. That's a 0, though it looks like a scribble now. So 2 times 0 plus 2. And on the bottom, 0 minus 4. And can we reduce or simplify that? And again, I like to write as a coordinate pair just to remind myself that's a point. And don't be scared of fractions. A lot of the y-intercepts will be fractions. And then tomorrow we'll actually graph this and see what it looks like. Give me a thumb. How are you feeling on this? Oh, good, good. Okay, let's do another one. x squared plus x minus 2 over x plus 1. This time I'm not going to put the words. I'm just going to do the work. Step number 1, factor anything you can. Can we factor the top? Looking for an offer. Offer of x minus 2, x, or x plus 2, sorry, x minus 1. Confirm. Conclusion. In terms of work, you wouldn't even need to show this. You would get one mark for simply putting down vertical asymptote x not equal to minus 1. So if this is all you had, that's a point. 
Okay, horizontal and oblique, so we're going to analyze the degree. Degree on the top, degree on the bottom. Ah, crap, which situation? Oblique. Upside down division. Numbers inside. Offer of 1, 1, minus 2. Okay. Number on the outside. Offer of minus 1. Step 1. Drop the 1. Why is that it? Because it's plus zero, and we don't need that for the B value. Is this getting easier? A little bit, okay. Intercepts. Zero. I'm not even going to bother writing down the denominator. Why not? Because our first step is to multiply by it, and it's going to become zero. Oh my god, cubic! How many ways are there to solve a cubic? A uh, quadratic! Quadratic! How many ways are there to solve a quadratic? What are they? Not difference of squares. And? Quadratic formula. Which would you like to use? Well, think about it. We've already factored it over here. So if you've already factored it, don't waste your time doing anything else. So we know x is going to equal minus 2 and 1. And again, I like to rate them as coordinate pairs. That's totally up to you. If you don't need to, then don't. Now, the short version for the y-intercept is ignore everything that has an x. So don't look at the x squared. Don't look at the x. The number on the top is minus 2. On the bottom, the, minus, the number is 1. Why do I not care about the x's? Because they're all equal to 0 at the y-intercept. So jump right to the end. How do we write minus 2 over 1? Negative 2. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. If you still like to do the long way and sub in the zeros, that's fine. This is just a cheap way to do it. This is the minimum amount of work you would need to show for a question like this. This would be one mark. This would typically be two, one for the process, one for getting the answer. And this would be one mark apiece for each of the x and y intercepts. So before we've even gotten to the graphing, this is four marks right here. Are you ready for one with a partner? Maybe. Okay, try this one. This one has a vertical asymptote and a whole, and that's okay. That's possible. Vertical asymptote x cannot be 3. Whole x cannot be negative 3. Horizontal asymptote has to be at y equal, does not equal 0. Why? Why is that the HA? Situation number... Number one, the first one, degree over degree plus one. And then there's the two intercepts. Who had them all? 
Um, I suggest we pause there. We'll come back and do the last one for this question, put it all back into our brains, and then we'll do number four, and then the rest of the time to work after lunch. Sounds good?